Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. In a world where rugged and reliable matters, Ruger stands strong. Celebrating 75 years of American-made craftsmanship, Ruger continues to set the standard for excellence in firearms. From the iconic 1022 to the American rifle and beyond, each firearm embodies precision engineering and our deep-rooted traditions. Join us in honoring a legacy built on strength, innovation, and the American spirit. Hey, you guys, thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. We're here in San Antonio with my friend Christina Pittman. From She is the president and CEO of Texas Trophy Hunters Association. And I love that your conservation group has a woman at the helm. I mean, like, that is super unheard of in conservation. And you are a pioneer for ladies in conservation and everything that you're doing. Um, thank you so much for making time for sitting down with me at your new grand opening. My pleasure, my pleasure. What an exciting week. I'm sure you haven't been busy at all today planning your move. To no, s- I was just telling one of uh, the guides that called me, he said, hey, what are you doing? I said, I'm at the pool, just drinking beer, <laughs> relaxing. And he goes, are you serious? I said, no, no. I'm at the new building. Yeah. We're getting ready. So yeah, today's the big grand opening. So let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, SCI acquired Texas Trophy Hunters was it three years ago now? Yes, so in September of 2021, okay. SCI acquired Texas Trophy Hunters Association. And now, I'm proud to say we're here. We're all going to be together under one roof. Yeah. The synergy is yes. going to be amazing. It really is. I'm super excited for the future. Um, we're just, the way I see it is hunters are uniting. We're, yeah. we're working together and we're going to just be stronger and more powerful. Mm-hmm. Well, because Texas Trophy Hunters is known to be like this deer conservation organization, right? Like it is Texas, it is deer, it is all things bigger. Tail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all things bigger here. And then to join forces with a global conservation group like Safari Club International, I mean, the impact that the two of you are making independently is incredible, but combined and sharing an office space now, um, the brand synergies that you guys are gonna have is just, you're unstoppable. For sure, for sure. Yeah, so 50 year history of TTHA. Yes, so in 2025, we will be celebrating our 50th year, which is something that we're so proud about. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that our logo is iconic, what we do is iconic, we love it, and we love the state of Texas. So we're gonna be doing a new big show in January. Yeah, the Hunter's Extravaganza. (laughs) Uh, well, the Hunter's Extravaganza is in August. Oh, I keep confusing you <laughs> too. The outdoor <laughs> extravaganza. Yes, yes. And it's going to be the first of any kind. Mm-hmm. SCI and TTHA are going to be together under one roof, similar to the grand opening, mm-hmm. but under one roof having a huge, phenomenal show yeah. in Dallas, Texas in January. Yeah, that is like the second weekend in Dallas, I believe. Yes, January right. 10th through the 12th. Yeah, and so what can people expect that have never been to a TTHA event? Um, so for this one, it's going to be different. Right, so at the outdoors extravaganza, it's going to be a combination of SEI and TTHA coming together. So people that walk through the door, they'll be able to join together as a TTHA member mm-hmm. and an SEI member. member. Yes, and they'll be able to come through the show for all three days. They'll also get gift cards, member perks. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's going to be a phenomenal show with tons of things regarding outdoors, hunting, yeah. guides. I mean. It's gonna be fun. It's all things Texas plus SCI. It's gonna be amazing. So there's guides, outfitters. Is it going to be similar to what we're gonna experience in Nashville with SCI on a smaller scale? I believe it's gonna be a combination of both, right? The two, bo- the best of both worlds. Yeah. Our hunters extravaganza is an SCI convention coming together one. So it's gonna be a mix. Yeah. Um, and this and is really new, excited. so we're yes. not really 100% <laughs> sure what to expect. We're like, we're like, this is gonna be awesome. We don't know how it's all gonna work out yet, but yep. it's gonna be amazing because it's the two of us. So it's, absolutely it's be great. It is. The hunters extravaganza, now you have 
five events for Hunter's Extravaganza? So we have three in the month of August, okay. and there are Hunter's Extravaganzas all throughout the state of Texas. We start off in Houston, August 2nd through the 4th, and then we go the next week to Fort Worth, August 9th through the 11th, and then we ended off in San Antonio at the Freeman Coliseum Expo Hall, August 16th through the 18th. Wow, that is a lot of, of traveling and, and convention. And But the beauty of it is you guys are a Texas-based organization and you're serving uh, conservationists in Texas. And so that's where, that's where your heart is and that's where you're getting and actually impacting these communities. And Texas is such a big state that like geographically it's difficult to reach all corners. Yep. So that's why you have, I would presume, so many different events. For sure, and they all look different, but they're all so, one thing that we all love is us Texans, we love our hunting, we mm -hmm. love being outdoors, um, and it, it's so neat to be able to see the newest, latest, and greatest items within the hunting industry at our shows. And some are different, Some, a lot of our exhibitors come to all three, mm -hmm. and some come to one, um, some come to two, but it, you can always get something different at each one of the shows. Mm -hmm. So you guys are really notable for your magazine. Yes. How has that changed or evolved over the last few years? Because um, I know there's been a lot of changes. There has been a lot of changes, and we're actually going to do some more improvements coming January one. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to go. Uh, we're going to give it a little bit. We're going to give it a little facelift. Not to say that we don't love our roots. We mm -hmm. love our roots. We just want to give it a little bit more love and and make sure that we're we're putting out an even better magazine than what we usually do. Yeah, so what is that? You're going to do more guides, outfitters, more stories? We're going to do different columns. We're yeah. going to try to get um, some youth, some more youth involved. Yeah. We already do, but get some more youth in mm -hmm. there. We're going to really help our college chapters and really try to get mm -hmm. them involved more with us mm -hmm. um, and try to give them more support, mm -hmm. which is what I'd love to do. Mm -hmm. We just hired another person to do chapters and events, mm -hmm. uh, but really try to focus on the younger demographic, right? Mm -hmm. Our future. Everybody yeah. can get behind our future, right? We want hunting to be available for our future. That's exactly right. And I think um, we just podcasted earlier today with the SCI Young Hunter Award recipient from last year, 2023, Libby Gear, and we, you know, we were talking about the impact that even from her as a time of like a six-year-old, what they make in the school or in the classroom when they invite a different perspective in, because there's so many kids that don't come from hunting families, mm -hmm. maybe not as much in Texas, <laughs> but there are still <laughs> kids in Texas that do come from non-hunting families and to have the voice of youth hunters and youth conservationists actually speaking to a different perspective and in, in sharing in a different tradition and philosophy is so important to the continuation of what we all love. Absolutely. And so speaking on that, you talked about the different chapters. How many chapters do you guys have in Texas? Right now we have six active chapters. Um, our biggest one is A&M, mm -hmm. um, and they've been around for I believe 20, 25 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. um, they're fantastic. And we want to get all of our chapters just as good as them, right, mm -hmm. in the sense of creating that unity and being impactful and being able to have, again, like I said, creating that future for our hunting. Mm -hmm. So what are the goals of your college chapters? Our college chapters, so they actually try to create a sense of community mm -hmm. within, the, within their universities or colleges, and then they also fundraise. So they create this area for community for all these college students that have the same passion in um, hunting, and then they'll go ahead, they'll come together, they create a banquet, they do some um, hunts, mm -hmm. um, and then they also, once they do that banquet, they have that charity banquet, they'll go ahead and also um, donate to the charity of their choice. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, there's all this fundraising that's going on between TTHA and now SEI, you're combining. Um, some of the some of the roots of your conservation work, share with everybody where where that's growing, how you're changing that, what, what the heart of TTHA is. So TTHA has always been the voice of Texas hunting. So we really are a resource. We try to provide as much information as we possibly can within the state of Texas as far as regulations, working with Texas Parks and Wildlife, mm -hmm. and really trying to be the voice for us Texas hunters. Mm -hmm. um, we are gonna open up a, we haven't really announced it, announced it yet, mm -hmm. but we are gonna open up a 501c4 mm -hmm. or three. We're still in the development of that, mm -hmm. and we will be. It will be Texas Trophy Hunters Foundation. Okay, that's fantastic. So similar to like SCI's foundation yes. as well, to where you can do foundation work and do different types of projects and separate fundraising. Efforts, yes, which is incredible. Um, what I love about the marriage of these two organizations is you have so many people that have a common interest in a common 
theme in conserving and enhancing what is wild. And in Texas, um, there isn't a lot of wild spaces in the fact of like public lands. Mm -hmm. um, so it is really important that the Texans that live here um, are invested in habitat and conservation because they're the ones to spearhead it because a lot of the land is privately held. Yes. And so these are passion projects that we have to have um, in it, obviously an investment in landowners that want to do private land stewardship projects, understand the valuable resources of the wildlife that they are stewards to in their own farms and ranches. And I think that's, you know, seems like such a big part of what TTHA is spearheading and working, you know, you know, tirelessly day to day to make sure that, you know, Texas wildlife is always looked after. Absolutely. That's exactly what we, we're, we're really trying to help out as far as, as much as we possibly can. Um, and together with SCI, now to your point, we're going to be a lot more powerful mm -hmm. um, with SCI being able to provide us, you know, legal and being able to be on top of um, regulations and hunting mm -hmm. laws, it's going to be a lot more um, easier for us. In the heart of the wilderness, every step counts. No matter where or what you're hunting, Onyx Hunt Elite has you covered in the U.S. and Canada with offline capability, land ownership, 3D mapping, and you can even access specialty courses, hunt research tools, and Elite-specific features. No matter where you pursue the wild, adventure is assured when you upgrade to Elite for the ultimate hunting experience. There are a lot of Americans that understand the value of hunting, but we all know that right now, national support of hunting is extremely volatile. It seems that with every passing day, our voice is diminished and the court of public opinion is not effectively hearing our side. We need advocates working on our behalf in Washington, D.C. to defend our freedom to hunt. And thankfully, when we need it the most, we have that advocate in Safari Club International. SCI's world headquarters are located in Washington, D.C., just blocks from the United States Capitol, which means that SCI is on the ground with our congressional leaders and federal agencies on our behalf, on behalf of the hunting community. SCI has an active political presence in all 50 states through their extensive chapter network and government affairs staff. If you have ever wondered why you should be a member of SCI, you shouldn't wonder anymore. Join us in the fight to defend hunting. Go to safariclub.org to learn more. There's so many people in Texas that want to be a member, but what about the folks that are outside of Texas, like for example myself, that I understand the value in what Texas is doing and managing a wild resource here on so many private lands. How do people get, you know, become a member or what's the value in becoming a member if you don't live in Texas? So I would say for sure, if you're not living in Texas, you need to move to Texas. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I live in Wyoming and I like Wyoming. Wyoming's beautiful it's too. Also a good, it's also a free state, okay? <laughs> But no, um, if you want to be a member of Texas Trophy Hunters Association, the main reason why is um, you're able to get, uh, there's a lot of things, right? I, and I'm trying to, I'm thinking more, you know, join Texas Trophy Hunters Association mm -hmm. if you're from Texas, but also if you're not from Texas, we have great member discounts. Um, we have great partners to where even if you wanted to come down to Texas and do a hunt, mm -hmm. we have member discount programs that, um, it honestly pays for itself, right? Mm -hmm. You can come out here to Texas, you can go hunt at G2 Ranch, which, mm -hmm. which is one of our partners. Uh, you can also get entry into our free deer contest. You can come to the trade shows on Friday mm -hmm. uh, for free. And that magazine, right? That important magazine that you get every uh, other month, it's bi-monthly, mm -hmm. and you're able to read stories. One thing that we take pride about our magazine is that the majority of that magazine is written by our members. Mm -hmm. So you're reading those member stories. Mm -hmm. um, you're also, like I said, you'll see some advertising in there, of course, right? Uh, but for the most part, that's what you're proud about is those member stories. Mm -hmm. Everybody can get behind a good story about hunting hunting and when they first started hunting or who they hunted with, right? So um, I would definitely say the main reason is is because Texas is a phenomenal place mm -hmm. um, and really just take advantage of our member discount programs and we'd love to have anybody be a TTHA member. I love coming to Texas. Um, I hunted here a few times last year alone and I, I mean, 
Texas, everything's bigger here. And like, it, I want to call it in my episode that I just filmed for last year, I'm editing it right now, I called it the state that doesn't sleep because literally you can hunt 24 hours a day. Yes. So like if you don't want to sleep, days. you can hunt something <laughs> 24 hours a day. You can use thermals. You can get, I mean, it's insane. The hunting opportunities are in this great state, but there's so much wildlife management that is being done especially at night, like when we talk about hog populations and, and how you know those wild hogs are um, uprooting crop ground, which is competing directly with cattle and livestock, mm -hmm. which is why a lot of these ranchers have a vested interest in wildlife management pigs, Correct. deer, the value of deer habitat and ensuring deer deer habitat. You guys have a ton of turkeys down here. Deep. So managing um, managing pigs, managing these animals that are you know getting into some of our ground nesting birds, and we really have to take a, an interest in that. And, and it, the pig thing alone down here is an almost um, never-ending battle with with management of that. And that's why the you know the opportunities to hunt here are so great and it's so fun. Like literally you come down here and if you like spook a herd of pigs they're like don't worry because you're going to go around the corner and you're going to find another one and it is never ending fun it is it is a good time it's a great time for people to connect um and you know we just had so much fun like last year i did some spot and stalk hunting during the day because the pigs are like bedded and you know we were spot and stalking these creek bottoms and it was like like I shoot, I shot this one pig at like 15 yards. It was crazy. Um, and and you know, pigs are running everywhere. It was like a war zone after I shot. It was unreal. Like you wouldn't even believe. Like the the creek bottom just like lit up and it was like a thunder. And there was literally thousands of hogs, feral hogs, on this farm. And. And we did some lower light hunting where it was still daylight hours and um, you know the boar the boar that I shot was coming out and to feed amongst the cattle in mm -hmm. these crop crop grounds and then you know where the where the opportunity really is for management is is really at night for them um, they're they're nocturnal animals and it is so much fun to come and hunt and also you know uh, sustainably harvest these animals if you want to take home meat there is no end to the amount of pork that you can take <laughs> home if you want to take a bunch of pig meat home um, but that wildlife management goes you know managing those pigs also affects the deer species Absolutely down here does. because they're all competing for the same resources yes. and texas is not known to be like a like super like rainy state mm -hmm. <laughs> like there is there's a lot of drought and there's a lot of crops that really can suffer from overgrazing and and really have to be properly managed and i think that's what ttha does that becomes so impactful is that you're you know working with ranchers you're working with landowners you're working with wildlife biologists to kind of have that okay how can we have this equilibrium in our ecosystem between hunters and conservationists and have it all work Absolutely. and that's the beauty of it if you guys have not come to texas good lord you can hunt everything down here it is so fun <laughs> you've got to come to texas and hunt at some point like <laughs> everything like Axis deer, if you want the best meat in the world. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Amazing. So yeah, it, and I applaud everything that you guys are doing. And I think, you know, the synergy between SCI and TTHA going forward is going to be unbelievable. And the outdoor extravaganza in January, ooh, it's going to be a good time. It is. And then I can't say anything yet, but there's going to be another thing that we're going to be announcing. Um, so stay tuned. Oh but it's boy. It's going to be pretty exciting, also. Yeah, it is all exciting, <laughs> and and I think. The great thing is so many, you know, nonprofits, we don't always work well together. And when we come together, together we rise. Right? Absolutely. And, and when we compete, you know, it's just like with anything else, it's harder to get ahead. And together we rise. And SCI and TTHA coming together, we are going to rise. And not only on the global platform, but also within states like Texas. And Texas is setting so many standards and doing so much biological studies because your diversity of ecosystem is so vast here. Um, you guys are able to study, capture, do breeding programs mm -hmm. and really have the pulse on wildlife management and conservation principles that are globally impacting. And um, TTHA is on the front lines with that. If you're not a member of TTHA, I wanna encourage all of you to join. How did you become president of this organization anyway? Uh, well, uh, so I actually, so it's a funny story. Um, I used to work at A&M San Antonio mm -hmm. where I was one of the founding staff members and built that, that that college up, or that university up from the ground. And um, I started volunteering with uh, one of the student directors. Mm -hmm. Her son was working with TTHA mm -hmm. and she said, hey, do you want to come volunteer at uh, 
the Texas Trophy Hunters, Hunters Extravaganzas? And I said, absolutely. That's how they suck you in yeah, every time. Yeah. You start as a volunteer, <laughs> and the next thing you know, you're like, I can't get away from this. It's my life now. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. So I said, absolutely, I'd go volunteer. I, she knew I loved to, to hunt. Yeah. And so went over there, was working in the deer contest for about three years, and they kept offering me jobs. Um, but I kept saying no because I was still so yeah. involved with the university, right? Um, and then finally they said, the third one, they said, that's it. This is your final offer. If you don't come over, we're not offering you another job. And I said, okay, uh, I'm going to go over. And, it, and I still volunteered throughout those times. Yeah. Um, and it was for the trade show director mm -hmm. position. So I said yes. I started with doing the Hunter's Extravaganzas, loved doing what I do. I still love what I do, mm -hmm. um, only it's a, it's a bigger scale, right? Oh my um, gosh, it is so big scale. Yes, yeah. but Huge. I love our exhibitors, mm -hmm. our members. It's so, it's, it's not even Becomes like a, a family. Job. Exactly, it's a family, right? We, we connect, we know their children, we talk, we, I mean, we, it's literally a family. So mm -hmm. that's the beautiful part of it. Um, I don't think I would ever leave the industry, right? Mm -hmm. I love what I do. And now to see the progress that we're making, mm -hmm. right? We, we've done our shows, we've expanded our shows, and now we're adding more shows. Mm -hmm. Then SCI acquired us, and it's, it's, it's definitely fun to be involved in being able to be the, the leader of Texas Trophy Hunters Association. And I have a phenomenal team. I could not do anything without my mm -hmm. team. They're fantastic staff. Um, they're very passionate about what they do. You have to be in this mm -hmm. industry, right? You have to love what you do. Yeah. And, I and you never work a day in your life because you love everything you do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So um, me and my team, we love what we do. We're going to keep doing more. Mm -hmm. And um, we are actually getting ready to go on a women's trip. Yes. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm getting Christina on a mule. <laughs> well. You may end up riding a horse, but if it was up to me, you'd be on a mule for sure. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. But um, I, we're going to have a good time and talk about women in conservation. And you grew up hunting. Were you hunting Texas as a kid then? I did. So my father actually took me out back then. Or I say back then, right? Like I'm super old. I don't like to think I'm very old. But she's younger than me, so she can't be old. Okay. <laughs> so at five years old, my dad said, "Hey, come on, we're going to go." And it wasn't a matter of uh, you know. It was just it was mainly for me, right? Mm -hmm. So he said. Um, he didn't. My mom didn't want me to go because mm -hmm. she thought I should be a lady and this and that. And, mm -hmm. and we can be change. both. And we that's, be both. That's, that's exactly that's, what yeah. we said, mm -hmm. right? Um, but so my dad said, you know, if you want to go, you can't speak. You got to listen. You got to earn your keep. You got to do everything. And yeah. I said, absolutely, I want to go, Dad. So we went, and I was hooked. I loved yeah. it. Um, unfortunately, then we moved to Seattle, um, to Washington for five years. Ooh. And I know, I know. Ooh, I know. Jay Ellen Smith is from Washington. <laughs> Sorry, Alan. But uh, your luck. <laughs> yeah. So we did a lot of camping, fishing, yeah. hiking. And then we came back and started hunting again. Yeah. And from then on, I just have not given it up. And yeah. uh, to see, you know, we're on the women's go hunting mm -hmm. uh, committee. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, when I first got on that phone call, I don't know. Denise Welker yes. spearheaded that. She yes. is amazing. Yes. We love her. Yes. And what a great way to unite so many women that it brought tears to yeah. my eyes, being able to see from where we were mm -hmm. to now mm -hmm. and seeing that Zoom call of just tons of women and no no disrespect to men but yeah. it was just pretty neat to be able to see when we didn't have camo back then right yeah and we didn't have a lot of other things for for us ladies and and that's not a, a dig or anything that's just a, it was that's a reality just a fact. Mm -hmm. yeah um, but now to see everybody come mm -hmm. behind it um, because a lot of things have you know I have a daughter and I want to be able to mm -hmm. pave that road for her to be able to do mm -hmm. and hunt whatever she can whenever mm -hmm. she can and she's on that road right now mm -hmm. <laughs> we had like 500 women at the breakfast this year for yes. the women go hunting yep. that Denise, you know, Denise is, she's such an excellent conservationist and, and it's something that she's like so passionate about and her vision for women go hunting is, is un unbelievable and where it's going is, is very impactful and we had like 500 women that all, you know, come from outfitting, hunting, non-hunting, conservation backgrounds, all in this room and um, the work that in the, in the relationships that are being spearheaded from that is incredible and yes. you know it's an opportunity for us ladies to get together and share passion projects that we're working on at home in our own communities and how we can support each other Absolutely. because that's what it's all about is lifting each other up you know if you're paving the way and creating resources and helping so that your daughter is going to walk into a different place than you did yep. or myself like I hey I grew up we're in 
camo from the GI surplus. <laughs> like, I get it. Like, I had some dude's name on the chest pocket of the shirt that I would go get. And that's what I wore when I was 13, when I was elk hunting. And those days are gone. You know, yeah. now we have, you know, clothes that function, firearms that fit. Um, we have a, an audience um, of hunting that we want to be engaged, we're active, we have a vote. Yeah. and we have a voice and and that's one of the great things that organizations like ttha sei women go hunting with sei um they were, were helping us have that voice which is so impactful it really is yeah and and we're going we're going there we're going all the way and yeah it's it's pretty awesome and nashville like we've been in nashville since the last two years, two years yep. and nashville is just getting even more powerful yes yes like, the most fun that you can have outside of hunting camp. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> like literally all the hunting stories and the people and the community and the fellowship. Um, if you guys have not been, you have to go to Nashville to our SEI's national convention, but I'm actually going to, I'm putting it on my calendar to go to the TTHA event this year here. Good. And I'm excited to join you guys in Dallas and um, feel that energy and, and join a new community. Um, you know, as a Texas hunter, uh, it's important to support what Texas is doing in, in, I was I was literally just talking with G. Allen Smith, and he was talking about going to hunt Marcor. And Texas is one of the leading providers of Marcor breeding programs in the world right now. And you know what you guys are doing with these countries where Marcor, like Pakistan, are native. Um, you know you're providing and sharing DNA and a breeding platform, and it's 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 revolutionizing things. You know, and and there's other. Yep. species that you guys um, are obviously have a significant hand and reach in um, and it's just great to be a part of Texas Texas is America you know what I mean <laughs> it really is it really is <laughs> like it's it's like this is like the motherland <laughs> we definitely are proud and we love it and um, we encourage again like we said if you're not a if you're not a member of TTHA come on we welcome you to be mm -hmm. a part of the family it's like 30 bucks a year you guys yeah. just join come on <laughs> it's um, worth it so if people do want to join where can they find more resources so I know you guys have a website it was like ttha.com is yep. it is, is that what it is they can go to ttha.com okay. if they'd like to online or if they come to our trade show we're actually gonna do a so it, any of the hunters extravaganzas with a great premium um, so if they come through the door they'll pay $30 and from there they will get a $50 gift card to cryptic camo ah, they'll sweet. get a $25 gift card to do all outdoors and mm -hmm. then they'll get entry into the shows um, any one of the shows and then on Saturday of our San Antonio show mm -hmm. they'll be able to come to our member party that we've partnered up with with Los Casadores and that's Saturday the 17th of August ah, this is gonna be so exciting you guys um, Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us. I know it's like busy grand opening. This is, the building here is beautiful and you are, guys are on the pulse of of what America is right, right here in Texas. <laughs> like, oh. Um, and you guys also have an Instagram page. So, we do. We, we so do. Instagram, Facebook, all the social channels, we YouTube. Do. You have a podcast, don't we you? We do, we have a podcast. We have a digital series yeah. called Storytellers. And where is Storytellers air? It's Carbon on TV? Carbon TV, yeah. it's on Waypoint, and then also on YouTube. Okay, yeah. perfect. You guys, check out TTHA and um, you know, find them wherever you listen, download, stream content. You want to be a part of what they're doing. Um, and we want to really encourage you to either visit a hunter's extravaganza in August or come to the outdoor extravaganza, extravaganza <laughs> in January. Yes. And thank you so much for everything you're doing and for sitting down. I know today's a busy day and we're behind as usual because I'm I lost an hour of my life. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. I'm not lying. I'm like, where did an hour go? So thank you so much for sitting down with us. My pleasure. And um, yeah, thank you all for tuning in to this episode of the Wild and Uncut you. Podcast coming at you from San Antonio here, Texas, at the Texas, Texas Trophy Hunter Association grand opening celebration with Safari Club International. Thank you. When conditions get tough on a mountain hunt, your gear must be tougher. Making every opportunity count means selecting equipment that will not fail. Any condition, anywhere, Hornady Outfitter ammunition is designed to perform. Available in a wide range of cartridges from 243 to 375 Ruger. When you're looking for a hard hitting, deep penetrating bullet and cartridge that performs in the most rugged environments, look no further than Hornady Outfitter Ammunition.
Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.